I don't know. It's pretty clear to me that if you drop a tangerine and it eventually stops bouncing, then that energy, the MGH the tangerine had initially, has to have gone somewhere. And it's also kind of obvious that it's not in any kind of spring energy. You can turn the tangerine over and yeah, it's still okay. Uh, but <clears throat> where could the energy have gone, right? And you kind of feel like maybe if you did this a lot and maybe if you play handball or racquetball or something, you know the ball gets kind of warm, maybe you notice that that energy is going to heat. But for a very long time, there was no connection between mechanical energy and heat. So it took this guy named James Jewell to do some really cool experiments. James Jewell was following on the work of... Um, what was the guy's name? Count Rumford. Count Rumford was drilling cannon bores. And you can imagine that if you have this cannon here, and you need to make a drill, <laughs> you need to drill a hole through this sucker, and it's got to be straight, then you can imagine that the bit would heat up quite a bit, right? Oh, you get it? The bit would heat up quite a bit. So if, um, if he did work grinding this, this is not James Jewell, it's Count Rumford, uh, as he did work, Turning the, um, turning the drill, of course, they didn't have uh, electric motors at that time. We're talking about, dang, what are we talking about? Late 1700s, as he's drilling this sucker. Uh, let's see if I can draw a drill. Yeah, so he's, he's supposed to be drilling this thing, and he's probably powering it by horses and such, and he can find out the torque that he's exerting on it and the angle through which it rotates, and he notices that the bore is getting really hot, and he notices that he's doing work on it, and he just says, weird, where's that heat coming from? And then uh, maybe he starts to wonder, maybe that heat is from the, uh, the work that he's doing. But it was James Jewell who devised this pretty awesome thing, and it, it looks like this. It's a, um, it's a paddle system and here's a paddle, and here's a paddle, and he puts it in maple syrup or whatnot, probably even put it in water. And anyway, he closes the entire thing in a, um, in a barrel, and the fluid's in the barrel, but out here, out here he's got a big pulley. Mm, yeah, okay, and he can, uh, he can put another pulley right here, maybe that one's standing right there, and then he puts another pulley out here, and that one comes off like this and, uh, and comes down here. And then he's got these masses that he dangles here. So he can calculate exactly how much energy he's given to these masses. He'd do a little bit of MGH on these guys right here and maybe he'd multiply it by two because there are two of them. And um, <clears throat> he'd figure out how much energy he gave the masses, but as the masses fall, they'll swish around in this goo probably as a result of the viscosity of the goo, and the masses would fall steadily. So the masses are doing work on the system, but the system isn't storing any mechanical energy. No, it's storing heat. So what he would do is he'd put a little thermometer in here, and that thermometer, um, where am I gonna put it? Oh, that thermometer here would tell him whether it had heated up or not and he found that it did heat up. Of course it did, because of the mechanical equivalence of heat. And so he was able to unite the unit of joule, which had been used to measure energy for quite some time, with the unit of calories for heat, which had been used in all thermal experiments up until that time. And he said, hey guys, check this out. A calorie is the same thing as 4.186 joules. And uh, this number is a magical number that you might have seen somewhere else, and you're probably going to see it again also. And then there were, oh, there were the competing physicists. And uh, these folks like to think in Fahrenheit. Boo, Fahrenheit. And they like to think in pounds. Boo, pounds. And so um, <laughs> they developed this unit called a British thermal unit. And they said one British thermal unit is the heat to raise temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Dang, what a lousy unit. Anyway, if you find anybody still using it, my gas company still uses it for the energy contained in natural gas. How frustrating. Anyway, if you find anybody still using it, you can immediately get back into joules by knowing that a British thermal unit is 
10.55 joules. Much more pleasant. Oh, I wanted to also say that water is really awesome because water doesn't expand. Well, I guess I should say it doesn't always expand with increasing temperature. In particular, as water melts, as water melts, water, uh, here, let's put an always here, doesn't always, as water melts, it shrinks. So that is one of the main reasons that life has survived over many cold winters because the lake doesn't freeze from the bottom up, it freezes from the top down so you can get little fishies living down at the bottom. Yay!